So you gotta figure out what consequences do you want in your life? Do you want good consequences or do you want bad consequences? Do you want consequences that you're glad you made a certain decision because of discipline? Or do you want the negative repercussions of consequences? Do you trust your uncle? You trust your boss? You trust his president? You trust your finances? You trust your politicians? You trust your local leaders? Or do you trust God? Who's in charge of all of that? And that's what King Solomon is trying to get us all to remind ourselves that fear of man is worthless. You must fear God. If there's one thing to fear, it's to fear God. What's cracking, everybody? My new smart guy, Matt Zapali here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas. And once again, we've got another breakdown of Proverbs, this time chapter 29. We've been doing a proverb every week. And now we're on the 29th week. We have two more to go. But to every Sunday night, we've been breaking down a proverb. So therefore, we're looking at it from a lens of finance, of success, of prosperity, of generational wealth building, from a biblical basis written by the wisest and richest king who ever lived, King Solomon. He wrote the books Proverbs. He wrote the book Ecclesiastes and the Song of Solomon here in the Old Testament of the Bible. And uh, for many of that's new to the channel, I've used the Bible as a basis and a foundation for me to establish my mindset, my morals, my values, my principles, because I felt that at 30 years old, and I messed up my entire 20s, I was married, divorced, single dad of three kids, I figured that if I was just trying to go out and become a good person, just being myself and doing you, and that wasn't good enough. So I needed to find a resource to make sure I built my life with values and principles that have stood the test of humankind. So let's go into Proverbs chapter 29. I've got verses here I want to review and go over and provide my input on it. I encourage you to read the book of Proverbs yourself. So don't allow any pastor, any YouTube channel, any influencer, anybody to read the Bible for you. You should go out and say, you know what? That's interesting. Let me find out my perspective on it based on my life, based on my life experiences. So therefore, you start building that relationship with your creator. And at the same time, so I want to wrap it up with John Maxwell's little call out here in terms of the law of the picture, because the Bible I use is the John Maxwell Leadership Bible. And not only is it the Bible, but also provides context from John Maxwell, his input from reading the Bible from the lens of leadership. So let's look here at Proverbs verse 12 and 13. If a ruler listens to lies, all of his officials become wicked. So you got to figure out who is in your corner, who is your counsel. If you're a ruler of your business, you're a ruler of your home, and ruler of your of your region, your district, if you're a politician, a ruler of your church, ruler of your school, ruler of your your enterprise, whatever that is, if you're listening to lies, you have to discern what lies are, what deceits are, because lots of times people will put thoughts in your ear about how they should manipulate you to a particular thought process for their gain. And if somebody else does the same thing too as well. So you have to discern what is lies and what is truth. So with especially what's going on right now, I've did a reaction video here with Andrew Tate. So a lot of these people feel a certain way about Andrew Tate. He got canceled. He's the most searched, hated, controversial man of our current time. Canceled. And so people have opinion about him, strong opinions. Either they love him or they massively hate him. And instead of figuring out what they said, what they said, I went straight to the source. Decided to have a conversation with them, find out what the lies were. Find out what the truth was. Next one here, verse 13. The poor and the oppressor have this in common. The Lord gives sight to the eyes of both. So our creator, God, is impartial. If, whether you're poor or rich, whether you're uh, uh, an entrepreneur, he's going to give you both sight. Now, the question is, what are you going to do with that sight? How are you going to process what you see? How are you going to process what you experience? How are you going to process based on the vision that God has given you in your life? Next verse, 15. A rod and reprimand impart wisdom, but a child left undisciplined disgraces its mother. Discipline your children and they will give you peace. They will bring you the delights you desire. So God believes a lot in discipline. He believes a lot in dealing with the consequences. Like you can go do you, but if you do you and you sin, you do you and you make mistakes, you do you and you create negative energy out there. Well, guess what? That's consequences. And that consequences requires then discipline. If no consequences, no discipline, then nastiness and a big mess is now on your lap. So I always think about this too as a parent, because I remember how I was raised. How were you raised? A lot of discipline, a little discipline, 
spankings, timeouts. How were you raised? And I was raised with a lot of beat downs. I was raised with no timeouts. Now these days I got to have my own kids in timeouts, but got to be firm. There's laws that they to protect children as they should, but there's still ways to allow you to discipline your kids. And I think what happens is parents get tired. They lose energy because they don't want to discipline their kids. Well, guess what? If you don't discipline your kids, you don't discipline yourself. You don't discipline your children. You don't discipline your household. You don't discipline them from the consequences that are about to come. Well, guess what? Then everybody's going to deal with the consequences. So you got to figure out what consequences do you want in your life? Do you want good consequences or you want bad consequences? You want consequences that you're glad you made a certain decision because of discipline. You took ownership of the situation, responsibility of your scenario. Or do you want the negative repercussions of consequences? Do you want the negative repercussions of your freedoms being taken away and your life getting smaller and smaller and smaller? And then next thing you know, you feel like you're blaming everybody because people are taking things away from you. But at the end of the day, if you peel back, you unpack it, it was you all the way along because you or the children that you raise, the, the entrepreneurs and the, the people that you're around, the employees that you hire, because they didn't get disciplined from you. Well, guess what? Now I got to deal with this mess. So which energy, which scenario would you rather have? Next verse, 20. Do you see somebody who speaks in haste? There's more hope for a fool than for them. So somebody's always in a constant state of hurry, hurry. They always got to be witty. They always got to have an answer for things. Instead of thinking things through, understanding the situation, processing it and coming with the best answer, the best scenario, the best situation for the best consequences. Well, guess what? Scripture says there, there is more hope for a fool than for them. I've seen so many people in meetings, instead of listening to the scenario, uh, creating sit situational awareness in their life, social awareness in their situation, engaging this emotional intelligence, they're just speaking. Da, 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 the first thing that comes out their mind, the first thing that comes on, on, on the tip of the tongue, right away they're speaking. And it may not have much wisdom behind it. They're just speaking to speak. And by the way, this is one of the biggest annoying things that I observe. Uh, verse 22, an angry person stirs up conflict and a hot-tempered person commits many sins. So I was angry. Matter of fact, to some extent, I'm still angry about a lot of things. But I don't use that anger to stir conflict. I don't use that anger to commit any sins. Doesn't mean that you're, if the way you're wired, you're hot-blooded, Cool. Just as long as it doesn't what? Commit many sins. There's nothing wrong. It says here, the sin is not being hot tempered. It's just making sure you don't commit many sins. Verse 25, fear of man will prove to be a snare, but whoever trusts in the Lord is kept safe. Do you trust your uncle? You trust your boss? You trust his president? You trust your finances? You trust your politicians? You trust your local leaders? Or do you trust God? Who's in charge of all of that? And that's what King Solomon is trying to get us all to remind ourselves that fear of man is worthless. You must fear God. If there's one thing to fear, it's to fear God. Verse 27, the righteous detest the dishonest. The wicked detest the upright. So for those of you out there trying to put out good vibes, you're out there putting out content. You're out there, you're an actor, you're an entertainer, you're an entrepreneur, you're pitching investor, you're pitching the bank. Just know that you're either going to be talking to somebody that's righteous or somebody that's wicked. Somebody's going to love you, somebody's going to hate you, but that doesn't mean you get out of your lane. Just know that's a scenario in a reality of life. And there's people that's going to love or hate this video and let everybody know in the comment section below. But at the same time too as well, there's going to be people that love this video and they're going to let everybody know too as well. So it's up to you, the creator, the entrepreneur, the innovator, the person that takes courage to change your life, it's up to you to stay in your lane regardless of what you hear on the left and the right. And let's unpack this, the law of picture. John Maxwell calls this the leader causing people to thrive or groan. So people reflect their leader. We cannot expect followers to grow beyond their leader. How many times have you seen a gang or seen a team or seen a company? You say, oh yeah, I know who you guys are around. I know what team you're part of because you act the same, you talk the same, you sound the same. Yeah, because they're around their leader. They're around the area of influence. So when you're looking at this, we can expect followers to turn out fundamentally different from their leader. So if you're a leader, we've always said here in business, your team does half of what you do right and twice of what you do wrong. That's why you, we always have to improve our quality and development 
of our own personal leadership. So therefore we can invoke that upon other people that choose to be leaders in our organization, in our teams, in our businesses. And so John Maxwell says here, people feel attracted to leaders like them. They also reflect those who lead them. So consider what Proverbs 29 tells us about the influence of good and bad leaders. Let's go reflect on Proverbs chapter 29, verse two. Attitude. When good leaders rule, people rejoice. When the wicked reign, people groan. So think about what we're going through right now as a country. Think about right now what you're going through as a, as a family. Think about what you're going through right now as an entrepreneur. Are people rejoicing or are people groaning? Well, it might be a reflection of you and your attitude. Number two, stability. When more leaders rule, they establish justice. Compromising leaders tear things down. Stability. Can your team follow you? Do they know that when I come to the office every day, you'll be there? They feel safe and secure in stability. That's why single parents and divorced families, their children face instability. And so therefore kids groan more. Because why? Mom and dad are groaning more. That's why it's so important to bring together and to protect the blessing of the family. Number three, compassion. Verse seven, good leaders express concern for the poor. Bad leaders reflect no compassion for anyone. Is it me, myself, and I? Why are you doing what you're doing? What's the purpose behind what you're doing? Is it just money? Is it only personal advancement? Is it only a promotion? Is it only get to you a certain milestone? What's this money for? Money is supposed to be a tool. Your success is supposed to be a tool. Your fame, your influence, all that stuff is supposed to be a tool. And that's just not for self-service. It's just not for self-gratification, although that may be the initial feeling. But all this stuff, if you're doing it right and you're building generational wealth, well, it needs to be done and built for other people to serve other people. Number four, honesty. When leaders pay attention to lies, their staff begins to esteem the same deceptions. So if you as a leader are using your office, your team, use a parent, are using your kids, uh, use a community leader, you're using your constituents as a way for you to have your sounding board so therefore you feel better, well, guess what? That's a dishonest move. There's certain things, certain conversations that need to be had with certain counsel, not everybody else. And people can sniff the lie. People can see if you're trying to manipulate them. People see you're trying to win them over. People try to see if you're trying to recruit them into your pity party. And last but not least, vision. Solid vision keeps everyone on track. Chaos reigns whenever the vision lapses. You know, it's often been said in scripture, it said when there's no vision, people perish. So when you're looking at your life, you're looking at your business, what's the vision for your family? What's the vision for your business? What's the vision for what you're doing? A year from now, three years from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, what's your life gonna look like? And oftentimes, we just had this last night in our, in our, in our office here, because we, we got close out on the 15th and the 30th of the month. I asked one of my guys here, man, bro, your first half of the month sucks. You expect the rest of your month to be successful? Because the first half sucks. So what are, you, what are you doing? What are you doing this for? What are you expecting? I don't know. I don't know. Bro, I'm lazy. Okay, bro. What's the vision you have for your family? I don't have one. Brother, what are you asking your children to do? Uh, I don't know. So you're telling me you're raising a family, you're raising your children, you have no expectation for them? You have no vision for them? What do your family want to do? What's their dreams? What's their goals? Are they looking up to somebody else or are they looking up to you as a father? I look up some, some dude as a person that's taking action in their life. I look up to you as their father doing the same thing too in his life. Do you want somebody else to be the hero of your family or do you want to be the hero of your family? Do you want to ask somebody else to lead your family or do you want to be the leader of your family? Brother, the choice is yours. And the reason why you don't know the answer to those questions is because you're lacking vision. And so I asked him a question this morning. I said, what did you think about a conversation last night? Boom, I got a long text message because it was a process, our conversation. He says, man, if I don't change, I'll be in the same spot five years from now. I need to take my own effing advice when, it, when my kids tell me they're lazy and they're stubborn. He's not following his own advice as a father. Remember, children, your employees, the people that follow you, they don't care what you say. They care more about what you do. So that being said, guys, this wraps up Proverbs chapter 29. I encourage you to unpack it yourself and find out what scripture is telling you and how to lead your life. Before I let you go, there's a couple other Bible studies here and how we unpack Proverbs from Proverbs chapter 21 all the way right now into 28. Now this one will be 29. Next week, next Sunday will be Proverbs chapter 30. We're about to wrap up Proverbs. Two more to go, 30 and 31. So that being said, guys, I'd love to know your thoughts, your questions, your feedback. You agree with me, you don't agree with me, please put it in the comment section below. How are you going to apply this in your life? Please put it in the comment 
section below. That being said, if you like this video, and if you haven't done so already, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our other videos and you've gotten value for them, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. With that being said, I just released my first book, Faith Made Millionaire. There's self-made, there's team-made, and then there's faith-made because when you're in the worst position, you can actually find yourself in the best position. That's the way God wants to talk to you, to you, and through you, and how you're going to build yourself up and how people are going to see you as a reflection of how good your faith and how good your creator and how good the blessing that you've been able to create for yourself, how that can be transcended and manifested in other people's lives too as well. So please pick up your copy of Faith Made Millionaire on Amazon today. With that being said, guys, I appreciate you guys watching this video. So for Dallas, Texas, I'm your Mighty Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to smart, continue to smart, and be Mighty Smart today.